so I hope you can see this um, on, on your screen. Um, the five, uh, uh, Jilly Salman developed this five-state model based on her, her research in, uh, in the use of online learning environments um, at the Open University when she was working at uh, the Open University uh, Business School. She, uh, she worked with quite a large number of um, tutors um, online tutors and students. So the, the model is quite a robust one in terms of um, its evidence-based and so on. And also, um, if you have a look at the latest edition of the book, um, you can see that uh, she has tried to use um, the model, this particular one, with other technologies as well, including um, uh, virtual um, games, virtual worlds, uh, podcasting, for example, uh, so it's not really fixed for discussion boards. Although it need to be noted that this was its basis was uh, discussion boards and and their early stages of uh, how they look like. Um, well, five stages. Um, I wonder whether um, whether the, the colleagues here can think about or come across any other five stages in terms of um, development or learning. Um, so um, it might be worth thinking about that sort of comparisons as well. Uh, the model is um, um, shows that there are there there are five stages uh, that participants go through, or in some ways need to go through, if they were to develop some kind of uh, knowledge um, development in the online environment. But uh, it might also be argued that uh, this might apply to other technologies as well or other learning environments as well. Um, the first one is access and motivation, so which means um, um, participants uh, being able to access the system uh, technically uh, without any problem and then having a right kind of motivation and level to do so. And that stage is quite important because uh, that lays the foundation for carrying on activities later on. One of the, um, as Jilly's book uh, mentions, one of the, um, especially these days, one of the tendencies is to move straight to stage four or five. Uh, they are quite high level activities where people develop uh, their knowledge in a personal way um, and then share uh, what they have learned with others and so on. But um, what she says is that unless you actually uh, create um, environment, create um, opportunities for participants to go through these stages, um, later stages will be less productive. Um, but I think as um, online tutors, e-moderators or e-tutors, um, one of the restrictions is the time. So this looks like it's a long-term process. Um, but if you allow, let's say, a week for each, it will take five weeks, um, or even eight weeks, or even longer. So one of the things, one of the issues is how we might apply these stages, and then while within the um, program requirements. So as as the um, as the teachers who are working on this particular program, you, we are aware that you have very much uh, re restrictions or. Um, criteria, guidelines in terms of what you can do. But I think it's worth looking at what these are. The second stage is the online socialization. That means, um, what it really means is sending and receiving messages. But what it, um, uh, uh, what it implies is that um, people getting um, accustomed to uh, talk to each other in the online environment. So uh, sometimes we, we know that um, some students, participants in the face-to-face -face environment might be very chatty, very, um, um, very eager to talk to each other, but when it comes to online environment, they might not be as, um, as willing to share information as uh, they might be on the face-to-face -face environment. But also, on the other hand, there might be some participants who are very uh, reluctant to talk in the face-to-face -face environment, but who might be uh, willing to share information online. So um, it's, um, it's a socialization, but socialization within the online environment. 
and also uh, following its uh, particular etiquettes, uh, ethics and so on. The, from the third stage onwards, we begin to um, exchange information. So this is um, in, in, uh, in a course that um, was designed exactly based on this model, five-stage model, uh, would have in this stage um, activities like searching information, um, doing things on their software that they personalize and share it with others, uh, and, and that kind of activities. So in the activities in stage three, the activities are not very, um, they are more like lightweight activities that participants can do um, quickly. Um, so they begin to uh, share information. The fourth one is knowledge construction. So this is where a lot of the peer-to-peer -peer interaction uh, will happen, need to happen. Um, and the final one is the development stage. In the development stage, uh, participants might be uh, sharing less, but uh, doing a lot more reflections, a uh, lot more uh, in terms of personalizing what they have learned. So it's quite also important to look at the, although on this particular screen we cannot really see the, the intensity of this blue color, what it really is says is that um, at the early stages, um, if you look at the bottom of the access and information stage, um, the intensity interactivity is less. The interactivity becomes more towards the middle, but also become less and less uh, towards the end because that's where actually they are they are personalizing their learning. So middle stage is quite important, and also. Um, um, the, 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 the tutor's role uh, can be different as well. In the early stage, tutor's role is need to be quite heavy, high, uh, in order for pe to get people onto the system. But later on, um, especially information exchange, knowledge construction and so on, more peer-to-peer -peer interaction need to happen because that will help um, learners to um, create a community among themselves. And then finally, the tutor's role becomes almost uh, participants, if it all works well, participants can actually uh, forget that there is a tutor uh, involved. Yeah, oh, OK, sorry. Um, this is uh, Natalia's question or later on? Uh, Peter made a comment. OK, right. Ah. First reaction, difficult to relate the context of wiki and uh, uh, difficult to relate to context of wiki and discussion boards on our course, notice boards, yes. I think that is quite a, um, yeah. Yes, okay, so I, I agree with Peter there. Um, that's what we were trying to tease out from this uh, session as well. Um, to what extent is it happening? Um, because, um, or to what extent are you kind of doing certain things that can be related to these stages? Um, and if it is not happening, perhaps it might be worth thinking for us what is happening apart from that, in addition to that. So maybe there are certain things that you are doing which are not really related to, cannot be easily translated into these five, uh, with these names or these models. Um, so I think it might be worth, and also if something is not happening, perhaps it might be worth, um, it might be useful for the program team to, um, to think about it as well. Uh, maybe to include, I think I just saw one point there, uh, Sheila, I think, uh, and also, uh, yeah, Lola. Um, saying that I agree that the emphasis tends to be on stage four. I think it's a good um, way of reflecting on what is happening in the course. Uh, so we can actually then think about, uh, I don't know whether that might be possible to do something to um, amalgamate uh, one, two, three, uh, and do something in future perhaps uh, for, for those to happen. Um, this is, so certain things are at the, um, 
at the responsibility of the program development team, I think, rather than the actual teachers, tutors who are lecturers who are teaching on the course. So I will take other questions as well as we go along. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So these are the five stages. Um, uh, so the tutor's role change as we go through these stages. Um, I, if colleagues are familiar with the idea of um, activities, the actual model, the approach, the type of activities that need to be created for these five will be different as well. Okay, so this is what I would like you to do, I wanted you to do. So I know um, this came, um, I should have perhaps shown this before. So these are against the five stages. I have got a table here. Um, my questions were how or does this happen? And what stage of studies, what, what I meant was the, what stage of the course? Um, I meant uh, the month uh, or, or, or the week or at a particular um, key stage of the course where they, they do uh, develop the um, portfolio or something like that. And also we are very interested to know what technologies and methods uh, are you using. So you might not be doing, I'm, I'm just assuming here, you might not be doing access and motivation within as, as a structured activity, but you might be using a lot of email, uh, sending emails to students, participants, or using the phone a lot, using Skype, um, any other means um, to promote access and motivation. I'm just thinking aloud here. And then uh, online socialization. Um, yeah, what does it happen? If so, what, how? And information exchange, knowledge construction and development. So um, why don't you take about five minutes to type up? Um, so if, when you type uh, an uh, response, it will be good if you can type, if you can also specify either name, access motivation, or just if you type uh, number one for um, access and motivation and say that uh, do this through uh, phone or something like that. So if you can please uh, type up on the chat box then we can collate the responses later on. That would be really really good for us to think about proposing any developments later on. Okay, um, let's uh, let's make a start again. Um, so thank you very much for the contribution so far. I think uh, there, there are quite an interesting points there. Um, so what Brenda is doing at the moment is to create some kind of a way of uh, putting the <laughs> information together so we can come back to this um, this as a resource to look at and uh, what we can learn from this um, later on after we have done the activity on Blackboard. I think the general point probably is that um, um, it will be, it seems like uh, quite, it seems like it's um, not all the stages of activities uh, are happening or it is difficult to exactly map what you do into these five stages but that is not really a problem I think because um, it's, it's really whether the interaction is going on or not um, and also um, it might be that the, um, the program design is in such a way that not all of these activities are, have been considered, um, but usually it's quite possible to um, um, improve a program or do some modifications to include these activities if, if um, that might prove to be useful. Um, but from previous um, what worked well, what didn't work well, um, one of the points was that um, in some cases students take part uh, well, uh, especially in the early stages and also through wikis. Uh, some cases the, the discussion boards might not be working very well. So it probably is a way or matter of thinking about what kind of technologies that can be used as well. 
Um, so, um, uh, <laughs> so that's <all> right. <laughs> so, um, I think that that's uh, that's that's a more like a learning uh, point for us. And also uh, later on when we have a discussion about further training uh, sessions to discuss with the program team. So, but there are some good points there uh, as well. Um, um, access and motivation seems to be happening, but you might be doing it through different ways and a lot of stuff on information exchange stage. Um, okay, so um, what, we, what I will do, uh, try to um, do next quickly is um, uh, try to get us, all of us to think about uh, whether we can think about our role differently. Uh, this is again from Jilly Salman's book, uh, pages 250, 51. It's one of the appendi appendices, in fact. Uh, she came up with uh, different words to um, describe the role, but maybe these uh, different words might uh, give a clue or uh, give us a way of thinking about the role. So generally, um, in, in, in an institution, there is a job role, uh, we'll say lecturer, tutor, e-tutor, and, and so on. And then uh, the guidebook might give um, some kind of uh, an idea of what it really involves. And then there are, we know that uh, the number of hours that need to be spent, or the minimum or maximum, and so on. Uh, therefore, <laughs> it's not always possible to do all of those things. But Jilly, mm, uh, when she actually wrote this book um, from the beginning, in, in the early stages, also thinking about these different terms, this is because um, the role is very, very um, diverse. So she came up with the e-moderate idea to begin with. That means uh, someone like a, someone who moderates a meeting or a seminar. But then um, there, are, uh, there is a sense in which the role might inv involve uh, negotiation, a hosting uh, someone like a host, a trainer, uh, because some, uh, some participants might not uh, be familiar with certain things, and so on, convener, online conductor, and so on. And also she used the word e-police as well. I'm not sure what she actually meant by that, but I think what it means is um, uh, creating some kind of an order in the, uh, in the online environment, but probably not, uh, there won't be any, um, any, uh, any way of arresting anybody. Um, so, um, and there is some kind of a management function involved as well, according to her book. And then she um, goes on to come up with further um, titles or um, ways of describing the role, uh, online chair, online leader, e-teacher, etc., etc. And also she come up with online garden as well. Um, and then um, and after that she um, suggests some other terms as well or create your, invent your own. What she meant by all of this is um, the, the diverse role or the diverse identities that we might have in the online environment.